people of Trinidad and Tobago, we begin in the name of Allah, the Lord of the worlds and the Lord of the people. May his peace and blessings be upon Muhammad, his last messenger. You are with us on I-95.5 FM, listening to Panchay at a different kind of talk. When the phone line opens, you can reach us at 622-3937, 622-I's. We always remind you, it's the shortest hour in talk radio. Today we might not have that much talk because we have some people here ready to do their thing you know we have a kind of poetry something this morning but before they go into their poetry you know i want to go into some stuff here the red steel won its first match by three runs the captain reminds us that the red steel is not the red force so i put up a red flag i took out my red pen and i'm looking for a red alert because i think that's a red herring some of the batsmen, like they have red eyes, like they tied up in red tape, stopping at every red light waiting for the red cross. The team is in the red, so we need some red-blooded performers to come out and cross the red line. The Red Army in the Oval is starting to see red because they roll out a red carpet, so red still better get red hot tonight. We want the time of the final to be a red letter day. We ready. We ready. So this morning, I have these poets. <laughs> Tommy laughing at <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> you see, he didn't say that was, we have five poets. <laughs> okay, so we have some brothers with us, as you you all know, our brother Intima Solwazi, and we have Eddie David, who um, well, they, they, most of them are in Canada. Eddie, the original one, David. We have Dwayne Morgan, you know your nickname? All right. <laughs> and Anthony, nth degree Bansfield, who was with us before. So they are here in connection with a program put on by our brother, Intima Solovasi. Intima, you know, that, well, we can say good morning to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, the people of the world, because a lot of people here, all in Russia, they'll be here in Panchev. So let's, let's start introducing yourselves around him. Tima, you will be last, and then you will tell us what the program is all about. Good morning. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Good morning, beyond Trinidad and Tobago. Good morning to the whole world. It's Anthony Nth Degree Bansfield here, traveling as part of the vocal artists, uh, Canadian artists across latitude. That's where we are coming down to this festival. So that's my good mornings. Blessings. Um, I'm Eddie, the original one. Um, I actually grew up here in Trinidad, so mm -hmm. I have tons of family. Big up to all the Allens all over Tobago, and all the, the Davids and Charles Davids and them down in Safari and things. So, yeah, um, I'm, I'm back home. Hey! Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, good morning to everybody who's out there listening, uh, tuning in. Uh, my name is Dwayne Morgan, and I think I'm the only one in the in the crew that doesn't have uh, Trini roots. <laughs> so, you know, I'm here, you know, representing Toronto, representing Jamaica. Um, so, yeah, definitely very blessed to be here. All right, and well, good morning, Trinidad and Tobago again. I am M. Tima Solwazi, and we are having a festival that's called Cascadu, New Caribbean New Voices International Festival of Spoken Word, and it's featuring vocal voices of Canadian artists across latitudes. Now, this festival, is a brainchild of 
Anthony Van Steele and myself have been working on this for the past year. And we are proud of this, this really five artists. One is coming in in the morning, please go, that is Motion. And we have Jose. Big up to Jose in the big go. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Jose is here. So the, the workshops will be held at Nales from Monday to Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And Monday afternoon, because you only need to take this this Monday afternoon, we have the launch of Cascadu in front of Nales on our Street there on the arcade. That's from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Then Thursday, we are going to Woodford Square for something called Guerrilla Poetry. It's an open mic from 3 to 5. And Thursday night, we're at Pandemonium Pan Tent. You know, for ya, um, Word in the Yard, that's in Belmont. And we close off with a wonderful showcase, a concert. <laughs> Under the trees in Normandy, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. So Pani Muno is 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday, we're going to Normandy. And um, before we move on, Brother Chris, if I could just um, like to really thank some of our main sponsors like Normandy Hotel, our platinum sponsor. And another platinum sponsor is Nalis, who have always been supporting us, whatever we do. And other sponsors would include the Policeman Corporation, Pandemonium and also the Ministry of Arts and Multiculturalism. Okay. So, I uh, support the people that support us. Right. Um, oh. oh. And, well, the Canadian Arts Council, as our uh, yes. Yeah, the Canada Council for yeah, the Arts. Yeah, the Canada Council for the Arts. Okay. For the arts. Uh, well, I, I train in the trick question here now. All these things are free? Except for the, um, normally under the trees. Okay. Right, but all the other events. What's the cost? What's the cost for normally? Normally? Yeah. Only fifty dollars. Only fifty dollars. So you can right. your whole entire family. Okay. All right. So let, let's get on to work. Um, because you know we have a very perceptive audience, and and of course you know um, the and the green knows that he was here before. So <laughs> all right. So how are we going to do this thing? Who who, who want to take off with? They hear the green already. They hear you already. So maybe we could start with people who Trinidad and Tobago haven't heard before. Okay. Yeah. All right. That works. All right. So, and and you don't have to any room. So exactly. Start with you then. All right. No <laughs> okay. I turned on my TV the other night and I heard this woman singing, and the words of her song really got me thinking. What if God was really one of us? What if God was that man that we see on the bus listening to us cuss and fuss and discuss the man that we don't know but we still choose to make fun of? What if he was there as a test to see how we treat those who God has blessed with life? What if God is the one trying to teach us wrong from right, leading us to the darkness, hoping we'll turn back to the light? What if God was that man that we see on the street, asking for spare change or something to eat as we walk by, pretending not to see? What if he was checking how charitable we would be when we come across those who are truly in need? What if God was that woman we see and we curse for not knowing her true value or her true worth, standing on the street corner, clenching her purse, seeing if we'll offer kind words or if we'll treat her like dirt? It is said that God will return as a thief in the night, with no pronounced arrival for those who want to worship or hide, which is why we need to live each day as a God or right here. After all, we are all made in the image of the Creator, and though we should not worship mortal man, acknowledge the presence of the Savior in every woman, man, and child. We need to love one another, never knowing and we will be on trial. What would you say if you came face to face with God, not knowing until it was too late? Did you smile when you walked by, or did you cut your eye? You see, we are to be living as sisters and brothers, treating our elders as fathers and mothers, doing unto others as we would have done unto us. You see, many believe that God will return for the chosen, but what if God is already riding the bus? All right, that, that's Dwayne Morgan. Yes. That's Brother Dwayne Morgan. So, all right, so let's, let's move to the man with the big training roots. <laughs> <laughs> all the people down in Sipari. Okay, <laughs> so glad. Yeah. All right, this one. And, and you ever see the trees them dancing? You ever see the trees them dance? It's a marvelous thing. It's a marvelous thing when the trees them dancing. When the wind whistling, them trees will be moving to the rhythm. Back and forth, they just be swinging. And if you're next to the ocean, watch how the coconut trees and them behaving. They follow fashion like West Indian. You only jumping up and waving. Papa, yo, you never see the trees them dancing. You never see the trees them dancing. It's a marvelous thing. It's a marvelous thing when the trees them dancing. We children used to be waiting to see the trees them dancing. Because when the trees dancing, rain does be coming. And we want to go outside and play football in the mud and we want to be back with no shirt and lighting cracking in the sky like fireworks. Then you hear pata pa pam, pata pa pam. The thunder does roll like tambu bamboo or drumming song. Whoa. 
all you know, them things fun. Papa, yo, you never see the trees and dancing. You never see the trees and dancing. It's a marvelous thing. It's a marvelous thing. The sky just set up itself, and everybody fed in. Real jam session. The rain does hit the chorus. Does hit the galvanage and the chorus like it's singing. And if you watch real carefully, the branches will be rubbing against each other like that quattro they play. Or maybe it's a stick fight to fight in. It looked like fight, but it's a dancing, dancing, a native rain dance. They say when ground get hot. Rain must fall, and the trees does dance for rain, and all it doesn't notice at all. I know, all you want to bother with me and my old talk. It's just that, if you ever get a chance to see the trees them dance, watch good. It's a marvelous thing, it's a marvelous thing. And life, does seem so much more worth living when the trees them dance. All right, that's Eddie, the original one. So, the nth degree. Breathe thee. Bring forth the word from the depth of the intellect. Name the world and draw breath. And breathe the rhythms and interweave the seed with the force of vitality. Word is the seed. Sown in the songs of the griot who hails the deeds eternal. Breathe deep and inhale. And bring forth the sound to the sign inscribed. And breathe out the sign pronounced in your mind. The word, the seed, the breeze in your chords. Strums a note in your throat. Corresponds to your thoughts. And ah, breathe yourself a drum to the rhythm oxygenic flex of the lungs. As word is to seed, breath is to the wind. Sound to the side, let the dance begin. And name every last member of the tribe. Sign the memories immortal in the song of the scribe. By the vertical gateway of a tree trunk rise and fall. Breath, chest, the sides. The pattern of voices of drums multiplied each in its own time, but fully synchronized span ages. Song is the soil and the seed of the word takes root as the name is decreed, breathe deep. The invocation, the phrase, lip shaping, soul intonation, cross nation as a chorus calls, innermost chord resonates. Ah, its percussion detonates the broken cola, notes of the cora. Celebrate life like a soul, a cosa. Breathe deep. Ah, breathe deep. All right. In, in Tima, you're going on your ear, just. We just keep in the Canadian section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what I can say again for those who know what you need, yeah. you have just heard vocal voices of Canadian artists across the latitudes. And they are here for Cascado. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what is the, the, the concept of vocal voices of Canadian um, artists across latitudes? Any, anybody want to share that? Well, we had. Um, been in touch, Tima and myself and a few others uh, in Canada for, for some time. And uh, we were building in parallel as we were doing our poetry, spoken word poetry movement in Canada. And Tima was, was working with others here and they were building. And so we were in touch. So we always had the intention to make those connections because, it, you know, with our heritage and our, and our cultural roots of a lot of us who grew up in Canada, maybe born there, maybe came there from a small, but we have a Caribbean, you know, heritage. So it was logical for us to, to connect then with artists doing similar work in the Caribbean. So that was really part of it. As we're moving across latitudes, is is also how how our blood moves and how our our cultural lines of connection. All right. So it, it's it's a way of keeping the connection with, with the Caribbean and the brothers and sisters in in the Caribbean. Yeah, because um, O.C. O.C. was also born in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh -huh. And Motion, her parents are uh, um, Barbadian and Antiguan. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we have that strong Caribbean connection. All right. Um, everybody here from function in Toronto or are people outside of Toronto? Both of us right now, we're from Toronto. Like I used to live in Ottawa. He's mm -hmm. originally he's from Ottawa. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so all right. Mm -hmm. But basically they seem to be Ontario, they're not outside of yeah, Ontario at all? Yeah, for this particular for this particular group of people right yeah. now, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's keep the place warm. Um, you know, we could we, we could go back again to you know our brother Dwayne Morgan and, and see what he has what he has for us. All right. As men, many of us tend not to see women as complete human beings, so instead we break them down into parts. Using Barbie doll images to determine who and what women really are, we've gone so far that we've made some women hate themselves. Dark skin still isn't right. There are products on store shelves to make dark skin light. For the closer it gets the white, the greater the chance that she might get a blind. Instead of fixating on her skin color, she can worry about her cup size. 
because as men, we have some women staring at their chest, not satisfied with the size of their breasts, taking matters into their own hands, resorting to surgical implants, watching as their cup size grows. Young children are being born fed on hormones laced with silicone as our misogyny condoned us being anti-women because we don't love women. We just love some parts of women, but the sum of her parts is her beauty as men continue to compartmentalize her into thick thighs and booty because you know it's our duty to find the woman with the nicest and to compensate for those who don't have stores and are selling underwear with pads while those with too much are taking fat from the back and are putting it in their lips and we wonder why some women speak so much doing just about anything to be shaped like an hourglass. Skinny girls have eating disorders thinking that they're fat while big girls are on diets trying to look like that and it would appear to me as though women have gone mad trying to live up to these standards as we as men set but could never pass. So she tries to pass by introducing him to her soul but his sole thought is that her soul is just a whole so he loves her for her whole and he thinks she's just a whole. He forgets about her soul and judges her by a whole but men we've got to love her as a whole. We've got to love her wholeheartedly, holistically. We have got to love she or holds the mystery to carry wheat to life. We've got to love her not by our standard, but by God's standard of perfection. She is deserving of love, respect, and affection as is. The gods made no mistakes when they created their kids. We have to recognize that every woman is a star who needs to be loved for who she is and for the sum of all her parts. Okay, wait a moment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because, um, I mean, we could go a whole lot into that woman thing. But, but, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. That was Dwayne that, Morgan. Yes, that was Dwayne Morgan. So let's go back to the original one. Um, actually, this poem is kind of long, so I'm, just, I'm only going to do like a, just a sample of it. No problem. All right, just, um, basically, not only am I a poet, I'm also a beatboxer. And there's tons of people that went to school with me back in Palaseco back in the day. Remember me walking around and you're, See, y'all was making fun of me back then, but I back now, you see. <laughs> I get paid to do this now. Just letting you know, I am a professional. Look on your names, eh? Can I attribute it? This one is just a sample of a piece called Mama Wouldn't Buy Me a Drum Machine. <laughs> asked my mama for a drum machine and she'd be like I'm sorry baby we just can't afford it right now and to the ears of my young self all I heard her saying was no then I went to school this one day and this white kid friend of mine told me that if you throw a tantrum parents have to give you what you want but unbeknownst to my young black self black parents don't respond very well to tantrums <laughs> they consider it a threat to their authority so let's just say a wooden spoon and my behind got introduced to each other and I cried I cried a long cry I cried so much that I ran out of tears with my mama looking up into the heavens just saying, Lord, just give me strength. And to the eyes of my young self, it seemed like the Lord was living up in the ceiling, but I got sent down to the basement. But down there is where I found it. It was one of my dad's old 8-track tapes, and it was blue. And I guess that's why I was attracted to it, because that's how I was feeling. Some of y'all are looking perplexed like you don't know what 8-tracks are. 8-Tracks is like a 70s prototype to today's in-car CD multi-changer. They're supposed to be around forever, but then an asteroid hit the earth, and then they all disappeared. Or was that the dinosaurs? <laughs> Anyways, well, I took it and I put it inside of my dad's old stereo system and that's when I heard it. that tape over and over again just listen to all the pops and the clicks mama finally got tired of me playing that tape pulled me out from the basement and sent me up to my room but up there I would hear those sounds going around in my head first it was I would hear the horns and before I knew it I was hearing the sounds of the drums not just in my head anymore it seemed like the sounds were coming out of me like a cipher like a cipher engaging everybody just to come out and play
have, we have no instruments in here, people. <laughs> <laughs> we have no instruments in here except the thumb. <laughs> you, you want to give me a little bit of that again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
Alright, right. Friday night. Friday night. Seven well, to ten. Well the thing is too, you know, Manchild and Motion are here, but they're both recording artists. They are they're rappers, they are spoken word poets, they're musicians, they have a number of records out. So when we do that show, it's also a musical presentation too when yes. they come. You know, they come with their tracks and so okay. on. So now people should 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 expect a full mix and range of what we do, which is which is spoken word poetry but also in a musical context. All right. Well, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that, that is important and, and, and it has come out here, you know, is the the art reaching the people with a message. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes we find that some people it's, it's word for word sake, they just talk. You know, I have no real real value, you know, no substance in it, you know, like I call some of them, but I I don't go into that. <laughs> but, you know, so but 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 the artists always um you know should look at what am I saying to the people? What am I what am I delivering to the people? And how will that help them to move forward? Because you know, basically that is what we're all about and that's what we have this morning and, and you know, we expect that that is what we will have, you know, over time because you know, if we go back and and remember some of the um the artists that, that we have had within the you know the um Jamaican entities, the Bob Marley's, um, if we come back to Trinidad and, and, and think of some of the Calypsonians like Stalin and, and all that, you know, people who have a message, you know, who, who have a headspace and say, look, you know, we, we want people to understand some things and they break it down and, and put it across, you know, and, and so you, have, you really have to keep that, that sense and, and, that, and that connect, you know, so, um, Tom, we go into any break or we, we run in street? We can go straight. All right, nice, nice, nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, be, but before we go, let's just take one or two words from 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 the audience before we get back in, into something. Call it good morning. Hello, good morning, Tom. I'm Casey. Casey, what's up? I am a baker, and I do my work in the kitchen here. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, no way, I can't help myself. I talk about raw, raw salad life. The visor hit me back. I born 69, like in the 60s, mm -hmm. 70s, boy. I'm talking about that raw talent. I'm not no, they say they're looking for money, that the money will be there, but it just feel that vibe. Right. My poor's raised on the top, you know. The raw, they go, if I had money, uh, sir, I bring them every month. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks very much, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All Thank right. you. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, brother Crazy. Good morning. How are you, man? Morning to the guests in the studio. Yeah, morning. Mm -hmm. I'm the reminder of Bobby Maxwell. You don't really hear about him much so again, you know. Mm -hmm. And he was, he used to do the same thing that they are doing. They just go on YouTube and just go and know Bobby Maxwell. Mm -hmm. He was famous for doing what these guys doing in the studio there right now. Mm -hmm. You know? And he even you know, in this person, he's written also, you know. All right. Yeah, doing that same kind of the box and, mm -hmm. and poetry in one kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same as for that. So, they good to see that they're trying to bring it back because they're like they're trying to push out all these old things and bring out that techno, techno, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Artificial <laughs> voice. All right, fantastic. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Peace and blessings. So, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Excellent, excellent. Um, you know, they say wise men, I try to remember this quote I heard. Wise men uh, speak because they have something to say. Fools um, talk because they want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, uh, something jumped out at me there when you were doing uh, when one of the um, artists were doing um, something about the woman, yeah. and then they said uh, we like parts of the woman, not the woman. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. I found that to be rather interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how how do you know? Marry that with, I want to hear contrasting, especially to African women, you know, where they spend all this money and they hear and they take. Is it that they want um, the men to just admire that part of them and they leave that? Could we marry something into that sort of expression? Right? And I'm saying that, you know, the artist is, is so important. If you look at all the great orators, you know, Luther, Malcolm, all of them, they spoke with a kind of a rhyme. Even if you hear it coming out from um, Obama and so on, with a sort of rhyme and a rhythm. Those your pieces inspire um, behavioral change. You know, is it that 
deep, you know, uh, you know, they're just getting parts of what you present. Mm -hmm. But do you have that um, level of consciousness that could bring about that change? And, and by the way, there's a group I, I heard, I think it's an Adventist group, they were doing something on sex and um, the HIV thing. I told you, young people, I craft I hope they hear this program and they come along to your gorilla thing. I, I, they have some really nice, nice, nice pieces. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I, I respect the word and, you know, to be able to use it to shape emotions and behavior, that whole art, that whole ability. Right? Mm -hmm. So how do we get it now to bring that consciousness that we seem to be losing as a people and all this other thing? All right, man. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Well, I think, um, you know, just to address some of the points that were brought up, I think, you know, for myself as an artist, I try to uh, lead by example. I try to live by the things that I, that I say. I, everyone in my life to this point who has had you know any kind of real significance has been a woman so it's given me being surrounded by women my entire life has given me a certain perspective in terms of you know how I see women the things I hear them say about their interactions with men and, and that sort of thing so you know I would never go out and say you know I have the consciousness to make somebody else change for somebody somebody has to want to change in order to change and that's a personal thing for them I can only highlight certain things and then based on where people are in life they take it and and do whatever they want with it i think you know the other piece about you know the african women and, and, and that sort of thing um you know we really have to deconstruct you know colonialism we have to deconstruct imperialism slavery all of these things uh and this it, it's not even just you know an african thing if we look at you know, um, in the in, in India, and we look at the caste system in India, and it's almost anywhere that was infected by by Britain has this shade, color, body image issues where the lighter you are, the more valued you think you are in society, and all of these things. So, in order to to get to the root of those things, we have to begin deconstructing our entire history of how we ended up in this part of the world in the first place, you know, being, uh, having these kind of ideas forced upon us, and now we're still trying to unravel them, you know, years later. Okay. All right. Um, Tom, let's take another call before we go back to the, to the poetry, because that will be here for this morning, so. Uh, Caller, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Chrissy, really, truly fantastic. I'm listening to the open words. And uh, the poetry in the word, and it's so powerful when you understand that, that you can get so much message, so much um, direction and encouragement, and even guidance from the spoken word. So I want to compliment the gentleman, and I will try to pass it in with Pot Square and, 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 and feel the vibes and be part of it. And I think, though, uh, if I may just um, enter this into the discussion, um, I know for a fact that the Ministry of Diversity, and I want to compliment the minister. I want to come in minister in respect to um, putting on a program called The Journey, which will take place on Sunday the 18th at the, at the waterfront. The minister that was in the Dakota, the minister of the compliment you. I, I, you know, I'm thinking, because this is about the, the journey of the Africans from, the, from Africa, the middle past of slavery to emancipation to now. Um, and, 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 and letting people never forget the pain and the hardship that the Africans went through. But I'm not sure if on the program spoke who was part of the program. I think this should this would be an important element to add into the program. So I, I must speak to my good friend, um, the producer, which is Dublin Thomas, um, to find if the spoken word is part of it. And probably it should be included on the 18th of, of um of this month at the waterfront at four o'clock when this program starts down there. And I think it would be a fantastic thing for all across the country, all thousands, to be there at the waterfront to experience what it was like to see the African person um, being used, seen as cargo, being seen as merchandise, being put on the auction block. And that whole um, reenactment from that point of view, and also the celebration of emancipation, the celebration in terms of the success of the African community coming out of that, I think the spoken word will be an excellent part of that program. So I'm hoping that it become a, a reality. Once more to compliment the Minister, the Ministry of Diversity, for such a fantastic um, or, or occasion to look at the to look at the journey to look at the hardship, but to, to ensure that such a thing must never occur in modern history. Chris, I thank you. Right, thanks very much. So let's get back to you know the spoken word. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, like, I like what I cannot 
call up Chukina Wami about that. <laughs> <laughs> the viewers know, the listeners know that this is Kaskadu. This is Pogon Festival, Nales Monday to Wednesday workshops, Ultra Square Thursday, Pandemonium on Thursday night, and we're normally under the trees on Friday. Right? So. And, and normally under the trees is $50. Yes, yeah, yeah, $50. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 free. Yeah. Open to the public. So All don't right. forget to call us. All right. So, let's, I, I, where, where do we start again? All right, I'll, I'll go again. But I think before um, even doing the, the poem, just to let the people know, if you're, you know, if you're out there, you're listening, you're enjoying what we're, what we're doing or what we're presenting, you should know that we all just came straight from the airport. <laughs> we, 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 haven't, we haven't slept, we haven't eaten yet. So, so this is what you get when we're sleeping. <laughs> so if you come during the week, to, to the Cascadu Festival, you're going to get this on a whole next kind of level when we're fully rested and we have some food in our body. So, well, well said. When I had them, Tima had that discussion after yesterday. I said, Tima, you sure these people will be ready for me? So, look, what? You know, you say they're coming in five o'clock. I said, Tima, five o'clock. We all at nine in Tima. You know, I don't make jokes. <laughs> So, uh, but no, no, but, but you know, I'm thankful, I'm thankful. I'm glad you, you raised that point because I tell you, up to yesterday mm -hmm. afternoon, I'm going through that with him, Timon. Because him, Timon, no, I don't make jokes with yeah. my thing. Because him, Timon, nine o'clock, mm -hmm. you know, he said, we're coming straight from the airport. Go on, we're coming straight. Yeah. <laughs> so, thanks for being here. Really, yeah, no we're thankful for being We're here. grateful for the yeah, opportunity. We're, yeah, we're grateful for the opportunity. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is a blessing. Okay. So, the, the last caller mentioned a, a journey, so uh, yeah. that made me decide to do this next poem. On your mark, get set, and so it begins. On the dark continent of enlightenment, the place from where all history comes. A people who were so ahead of their time, they were sending text messages when they only had drums. Out of the starting blocks, we are off to an early lead as world travelers and explorers, sharing our philosophies, creating universities and structures that would make the world stop and wonder before, passing the baton on to the relay's next runner in the Caribbean Sea, who lost a bit of ground through the Middle Passage and slavery, but nobody said that the race would be easy. So for over 400 years, they continued to run, limping through the pain, knowing that cramps will come and it's going to hurt sometimes, but you've got to focus and keep going through the plantations, the lynchings, and the hate, even when the spectators in the stands call you other than your name, because it is not what we are called, but what we answer to that is important. Victory is an uphill climb, and we've got to continue to rise like Lazarus, knowing that even the slightest of steps can mean so much. Sister Rosa Parks sat down to stand up, so I can't give up as I try to make sense of this baton that's been placed in my hand while I struggle to be, to be accepted as a man in this world that seems more concerned with whether or not I'm in down south and I'm all about being endowed in the places where it counts in my family and my community because knowledge of self is like a garden. If it is not cultivated, you cannot reap a harvest. Victory will come to those who choose to run the hardest and it really doesn't matter if you know the secret because not everyone will believe enough of themselves to do something with the information. No one was made to be a spectator in life. We are all the active participants in the race to fulfill our destiny. So when the baton comes, take it and run because failure isn't a crime and aiming too low is. Because if you reach for the top of a tree, you might never get off the ground. But if you shoot for the stars, you might at the very least get to the top of that tree. And I might not get to the finish line with you, but I will continue to strive to carve out my own space before passing this baton on to a new generation of runner, confident in victory because success, it runs in my race. I love that one. I know. Before you go to Eddie, Anthony, this piece here that wind falls right into what you're doing here because Part of their visit here is a, is a, is a continuum because we're looking yeah. to organize an exchange. So hopefully we're looking at as soon as next year to take a team from Trinidad and Tobago and go to Canada. So we pass on our baton right, that because we want to invite the young persons, especially to come out and take part in this workshop because that will help bring that, that um, help us to know who we're passing the baton on to because yeah. that's important. So I love this piece like this. Okay. Day oh, day oh, daylight come and the one go home. I've been working that graveyard shift and I can't hardly really stand no more. Looks like it's about to break it down, so I guess it's time to go. And I gotta get to the grocery store, cause I got mouths to feed and supplies are running low. But first, I gotta get to the bank, see if I can increase my rank, cause I need my lights and heat, but they about to cut off my hydro and gas. Rent's due too. My kid needs a filling in his tooth, and you know I gotta pay for that. And a whole lot of other bills I owe, like cable, phone, 
I was thinking of checking for an emergency loan. Maybe get a second job. Either that or get myself cloned. I've been trying to get something to pay more, but every time I seem to get my foot in the door, I get to an interview, I never get hired, no matter how well I think I do, how much qualification experience I show. So one day I asked, what's going on? They told me if I don't like it, I could just go home. Hey, 24 hours in which to earn a living wage. And there's no lack of manpower, just a concentration of power. Loss of laws for equal pay means less women power, even though they do in the hardest labor. And all around the globe, many are enslaved, and some are even slave traders. Kids in despair in sweatshops when they should be in the care of educators. And for every bite of a banana and purchase of a brand name bandana, I am a collaborator, a consumer of big oil and big sugar, from Ghana to Guyana, Delhi to Manila. But I heard a fella say to Master Day Dunn that they have you under run, that the time soon come when we can let freedom reign. And it must have slipped back like reconstruction, cuz. Many are still living in de facto debt bondage, struggling to get by on single income, ER, minimum wage, working something part-time and no future, make no use of their skills and brains. They want a chance to just ease up, pull out of the rat race. They tired of looking around, working like a dog, see they's water for days, going two step forward for every one backwards they take. Nah, they just want some time to ease up, hang with friends, Break bread with familiar face, man. Everybody looking for a place that we could call home. Huh. A right bunch of bananas might look and smell and taste real beautiful. And I might be entertaining and have a gift that's lyrical or musical. And you could call me a classic, though I'm not normally considered classical. But underneath it all, underneath this laid-back exterior, there's a tarantula who, when cornered, could be deadly. And there's no inoculation for this venom because it's foreign plus tricky, more like a Nancy than Peter Parker, came out of the cross and even stronger, a born survivor who could work all night on a drink of coffee, Red Bull, I ain't got no money for rum, I ain't got no, no rage and wazes, but I gotta make payments, so I gotta lift and tote till morning come, and some end up in the street and they call them bums, but they ain't gonna beg for crumbs, they gonna collect can in the alley, so come Mr. Tallyman Tally. Count out your, your, your migrant schemes and domestic visas for immigrant workers that can only afford craft dinner but still recall the taste of platanos and cassava pone. Save up to send barrels home to take care of their own and run through countless calling cards to touch base by telephone and to wonder deep down in their soul, even though they've staked their claim in this soul, they ask, could this ever be home? Deo, Deo. They like come and they want go home. All right, so how you gonna find look out here? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't something different. All right, so let's get back to the original one. In uh, okay, this one's actually for Haiti. <laughs> this this is a disaster, and there's nothing natural about it. And if it is, there are those out there on the sidelines with an agenda waiting to exploit the people and their circumstances. And all over the world, or is it just in third world countries, it seems to be happening with a frequency. And some say that are those that are fighting for control of the remote to dial a frequency strategically. And in other news, local doctors save thousands of lives with the help of this community. But that's not news to be reported on CNN. And see, look who's posting videos on YouTube, Twittering, and tagging all their Facebook friends. American reporters, ex-presidents, daughters, and Hollywood superstars. And don't forget to add me. And even though it seems exploited and pathetic, just remember that the image we're going for here is helping and sympathetic. You saved a life today. Let's get that on camera. You took a life today. That's just unfortunate that you had to be caught on camera. Administering non-sanctioned pharmaceutical trials. And I wonder if this is the primary crime scene or just one of many in this series for these killers without borders. But just remember, we are the world. We are the children. Everybody now, we are the ones that call the Quincy Jones and Lionel Richie saying that we can remake our world just by auto-tuning it. Sample Michael, maybe the tragedy will sound better. Make a great movie script. How about a documentary on World Beat? A world beaten into submission by the World Bank, banking on the turmoil and the underdevelopment. These pirates have patches over the public eye, and yes, they are rub eye, and they continue to do it. No pictures on the wall, hell no walls for pictures, because they huffed and puffed and harked the houses down. That left all among the rubbles with empty milk cartons with pictures of missing third world children. They have been abducted. They've been abducted. I mean, sorry. I mean, they've been abducted by well-meaning Angelina Jolie's Madonna's and other star figures. See, they all can't be Josephine Baker. Labeled your children orphans and separated them from their parents like lamb led to the slaughter. Kind of gives new meaning to do you know where your children are? Hopefully not being raped and butchered because a tin man needs a donor and he's willing to pay to avoid the paperwork and the delay. Even the wizard knows that the dead is being sold for parts. But tell me, what exactly do you get for the person that has everything but no heart? 
but I don't mean to alarm you, because this could just be the janitor trying to clean up, but there's a black man in the office. And supposedly now the world is safer, but I think that's a distraction. Broken families everywhere, not enough food, not enough water, not enough medical care, and getting fat would be a luxury for little girls that hope to grow up, sing, and end this nightmare. Could somebody translate what they're saying? Because I thought they spoke French over there, but obviously they weren't colonized properly the first time. But as you can see, with this new disaster, it totally makes room for second chances. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, um, and, and it's important, you know, that, that listening faculty, that listening faculty, not just the hearing faculty, but the listening faculty is, is really, really, really in, important, you know. So, um, again, you know, people pay, pay attention. Who, who, who goes next? ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがと
and um, Robert Normandy. Okay, this is very interesting. Remind me of the time that I spent on Fulton Street going to those um, theaters listening to this type of poetry. Very educational. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much, man. You're welcome. Oh, come somebody skip us. Yeah, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Quincy Atiba. Speaking. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. You know this voice. This is Pilar Abdullah Mustafa yes. Ibrahim. Yeah, long time no here. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm what's going on in the world. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm listening and re re remembering what Elijah Muhammad told me when I sat with him for the 10 years that I spent in his church in New York. Mm -hmm. Wallace was a baby. Farrakhan was a very small boy. All right. Those gentlemen that just read those poetry, where are they from? Well, they live in Canada. They live in Canada. They have Caribbean, they have Caribbean roots, but they live in Canada. Yeah. Right. What I want to ask both of them, do they know the living condition in this country? I listen to both of the, po the, 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 the poetry because I don't miss your program at all. And I'm yet to reach here you are on Queen Street and for us to have a debate face to face. <laughs> okay. You know me. I don't cut corners. <laughs> okay. And I ain't afraid nobody from the Pope back down. I would like them to tell me what good those two poems they just recite will do for a mother living in Laverty, John John, that has four children, for three different fathers, and she has one in her belly, for a man that she thought would have stayed with her, but as the belly started to show three, four, five months, he bought it. And what good would that do? A young boy who had to stand in front of magistrate in the morning for having a weapon a firearm. When he figures if he use the firearm, he will get out of the ghetto and be somebody. Right. Answer me please, I will listen to you. I will hang up. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, I, I, will, I will venture to answer that. People can only do what they can do. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each human being a level of skills and if they use those skills well, then they will benefit from it. And if people see what they are doing, and it's positive, they can learn from, from, from it and do it too. But every individual has to make that choice about his life or her life. The boy can't make it do nothing. You know, he can put out the words, the priest could put out the words, the imam could put out the words, whoever it is, can say what they have to say, but at the end of the day, you have to pick it up and run with it like the baton. You know, you could put on the baton and you're not running with it, you know. You can just drop it. Too heavy. Yeah, too heavy, and I don't with that, and I go on the corner and do whatever I have to do, you know what I mean, and try to do something else, you know, so the individual has to understand that he or she has to make the change, you know, as Allah says in the Quran, it doesn't change the condition of a people until they change what is with themselves, and, and we have to learn that in all the struggles that, that we have to do. And, and as we, we always say, the shortest hour in talk radio, if you're only watching the clock, we need to make a camera by the time we finish. This is the shortest hour in talk radio. Ask Tom, don't say that. Don't say that. So, um, in, 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 in entry, I had this expression, one for the road. So we might have to look for a one for the road or a, a, a two for the road or whatever. So who wants to say, I would just add in there yeah. that when, when I would hear a poem, like I, I remember listening to Lillian Allen, who I really like as a dope poet, you know, and she, uh, she's in Toronto there. And, uh, you know, at the time I, I wasn't really doing a lot of poetry and my problems might have been not that severe compared to other people. But when I heard her poetry, it gave me a lot of joy and a lot of strength and inspired me. So, you know, that, that's what something I heard artistically did for me. I think everybody's been touched by, by some art. It's that sometimes the effect is not anything that might seem to be to, to save you, yeah. you know, but it can. It might, who knows what it can do for somebody. It might bring them a little joy, it might give them an idea, it might just, you know, it's hard to say what kind of effect that's going to have. But speaking for myself, I know that, you know, I've heard some, some good material out there that's yeah. inspired me with a book I read or a song I hear. So, you know, sometimes I just give you a little inspiration and courage. All right. <laughs> but that's, that's and that's what you could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what you could do. All right, one for the road. Who wanted, who wanted to do one for the road? That, you know, um, um, the, um, the, I 
<laughs> Where is the true brother? Is he the one who goes into a jam, gun in his hand, finger poised on the trigger? No, that's the real. Every day there are brothers keep dying, the media keeps lying, and we keep buying into the lies that they feed us. Their lies lead us, deceive us, then leave us without a clue of where we're headed or what next we should do. Where is the true brother? Is he the one who calls our women whores? Her beauty he ignores. The true brother knows that our sisters came first. They gave this world birth, yet many neglect her true worth and treat her like dirt. Where is the true brother? Is he the one who whispers in your ear, letting you know that you're his when he really has six young kids in six different women's cribs on the street corner hustling with his little dime bag, nowhere to be found, his kids cry for dad? Now let me ask you something. Why is it that so many of our women have baby fathers when they really need husbands? Now ladies, I'm not saying that you can't make it on your own, but any strong community first starts with a strong home. The true brother knows this already. He nods with approval while others' heads get heavy. Now ladies, you've got to be wise. Beware of he who feeds you lines. Where is the true brother? Our women cry. We need to look around the room and one's right before your eyes. Well, you're hearing me now, but when you come out this week, I'll be right before your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good pitch, good, good pitch. Okay, so we, we, we started to get into shutdown mood. Um, so, Intima, can you repeat the, the, the issues that, that, that we have? The Nales, okay, we have Nales, <laughs> Monday to Wednesday, mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 12 to 30 p.m. Dollar workshops. And the workshops are conducted by vocal team. The vocal team will have Chris Ringo, Freetown Collective, Rachel Collima, Joan Gill Johnson, and yours truly, Empty Masolazi. Monday afternoon, you're in the arcade, that's in front of Nallis, in Abercrombie Street, from 2 to 5. Thursday, we're in Woodford Square, 3 to 5 p.m. And then we head straight up Pandemonium Panyard in Belmont, from 7 to 10 p.m. And we close off, normally under the trees, Friday night, 7 to 10, at a gate cost of only $50. Okay. Right? Um, again, you want to pick up Normandy Hotel, big sponsor. Yeah, you call all the sponsors. Normandy Hotel, yeah. Nallis, National yeah. Highways, um, the Polyphon Corporation, Pandemonium, right? And you call a Canadian? Yeah, the, the Canadian, Canada Council for the Arts. For the Arts <laughs> and the Ministry of Arts <laughs> and Multicultural. Okay. And this is brought to you by the Oral Tradition Roots Foundation, the Trent and Vigo Press Society, Press Society Trent and Vigo, and the Project Vibes. Okay. All right, so as, as we are about to shut down, I had to do some reminders to the people. Section 34, I know, I, I know these brothers here, you don't know what I mean, but you need to know what we're talking about. Section 34, new flying squad, fire truck, drums. And now we're getting into something about postponement of local government elections. You're piling it up, you know, <laughs> every day is a new story. Well, we will see where that, we will see where that goes. People actually debating. You put in all for the you know local government elections and some people talking about local government councillors that don't exist it didn't crash it over everybody's an individual citizen going about their business don't think you're a councillor for nothing so anyway we want to remind you that for some information on islam you should visit the islamic resource center the headquarters of the islamic resource society number 24 queen street in port of spain i want to thank all my guests here this 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 morning for being here without food, without sleep, <laughs> you know. I, 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 I want to give them the money here for persons who... If you want, yeah. yeah. 479 4510-479-4510. Okay, um, so that's the contact in Timo, right? So, as I say, thanks very much for being here this morning, I mean, it's, it's, it's lovely. And, um, and a hungry belly. And a hungry belly. <laughs> and, and Tom, I want, as usual, at the time, Tom, Tom is yeah. you know, one of the best best we have, you know. So, thanks very much again, Tom. Right. So, people of Trinidad and Tobago, peace be upon you. From the time of Adam, God had taught man through his prophets to live by the truth and to search for the truth. To know that their Lord God was one, far above all else in his majesty. He had no need of partners.